guess what? Bought another tent. I bought this one on eBay actually, but I think it ultimately came from Summits in Paisley, which is a local outdoor store. And the retailer has kindly sent me a couple of baseball caps, which is quite nice of them. We camo one and another one in uh, khaki green. So it's a Van Gogh Force 10 Zenon UL2. And partly why I chose it is it's relatively light for a two person, or at least I hope so. Let's just find out what the weight is with everything on it and the hand tags. Uh, 1.9 kilos, so yeah, that's pretty much bang on the money and what I expected. Comes in one of these fast pack bags, so a kind of side opening which is a lot easier to use and just pack away a wet tent. Always like that design. The instructions are just sewn into the fast pack bag itself. So unpacking it, just the usual selection of quite light and um, simple pegs. A couple of these I think are for the tension band at the front in the vestibule just to hold it down so you don't trip over the strap. Whether you actually need these I don't know, I could probably dump them. Although they are very light. A couple of Yunnan poles. I'll put the specs on the screen later on about these things. Uh, it's not the first video in the world. So you're probably quite familiar with this tent. Let's look inside the repair kit and see what's in there. So, variety of patches as normal. And as well, sorry, a pole repair tube. I actually thought the poles would be the same length, but uh, I noticed they're colour coded, so there must be a slight variation in them. I'm imagining the rear pole is slightly lower or shorter than the front pole, so it must be a slightly tapering tunnel design. So it seems to have a, a wee bit of a case of static cling. Anyway, I've got it roughly up, I'm just going to fine tune it now and sort it out. Okay, there you go, it's up. It's really easy to pitch as you'd expect with a two pole tunnel. So no hassles at all, very quick in bad weather. The inner's already attached to the inside, which is one of the main reasons I bought it. It's also very light for such a spacious tent at 1.9 or less kilos. So it's light enough I can use solo and big enough I can use with my wife. And it should be good for three plus seasons, I would have thought. Uh, one wee thing I don't like so far is the hood. This doesn't seem to sit properly, it doesn't sit out. It kind of pops in, I don't know if it, it doesn't, it's like a solid plastic pipe. But at the moment it's bent out of shape and doesn't want to sit in the correct position, but we'll play around with that. There's a wee buckle for securing the bottom of the fly sheet to stop the fly creeping in high winds on the zip. So, what can I tell you about the interior? Um, very large, it's good, nice width, it's 130 wide at the front, which is exactly what I was looking for, um, compared to say the MSR Access 2, which is about 125, 127, just slightly tight for two. It's also got pockets running right along the side, which is quite nice for organisation. They won't take anything too heavy without sagging, but that's good. Above your head, there's another couple of pockets, which are ideal for putting a head torch in. I'll probably put a radio in. The one thing that's missing, but I'll add to it, is a hanging line. I'd like a wee drying line to run right along to the back of the roof, to here. Plenty of space between the inner and the outer. And the inner is very light, but nice and silky. Um, doesn't need to be any more robust than that. I think it's fine. And the door itself just tucks away into a wee side mesh pocket. You can also get a kind of feeling for the size of the vestibule as well which is pretty big, generous and if you look up at the door you're able to zip the door back, it's a two-way zip so you can cook under cover without rain coming directly down into your stove or into the inner tent which is also good. One other thing to mention is the TBS system which stabilizes the pole. It's only available in the front pole but uh, it's a cord system which is like internal guying and it connects with these buckles which you can release and move out the way and that just gives you more stability and crosswinds. Nice interior, very livable. You can spend a bit of time in bad weather in it and it's quite warm and comfortable in terms of you can close off most of it other than this mesh 
vent right at the back which uh, remains open but I don't think there'll be too much breeze I think uh, to use this in four season I would probably have to upgrade the poles to DAC 9mm or 10mm but I reckon that's doable so if I could get the right pole for it I may well be able to extend this into next winter really good size vestibule easily it'll take a pack to either side and still allow you to get in and out unobstructed and also to cook again just talking about the kind of average finish on it if you look at the seam tape there it's gone a wee bit alright it's still over the stitching but it, to be honest it's not that straight you can see at the top of the door here how you can prevent it seems to be quite a good space healthy space between the inner and the outer so shouldn't clap together too much unlike uh, one of the Robins tents I had uh, can't remember the name of it but uh, it was too tight so there you go that is two Themaris a Neo Air X Therm and an X Lite in place and unlike say my Black Diamond there's space between us and space left and right there's also a good amount of length behind the, at the foot and at the head so I'm lying on the X Therm with uh, just about the mid position and as you can see tons of room I don't think there'll be any problem with sleeping bag transferring moisture through from the outer the ground sheet's actually quite thick so it must have pretty good hydrostatic head which I'll put on screen for you uh, so that feels pretty good standard size Osprey Levity 45 tucked in the corner still plenty of room and just enough head height to cook and uh, just live in and as you can see, you've got a, about a quarter screen you can open for a bit of venting but you can make most of the inner basically solid which I do like actually, and just keeps breezes out when it gets really cold into the spring and autumn Also a wee bit too warm in the height of summer because you can't make midgy mesh for the whole door but hey, it's not a major deal breaker So there you go folks, just a quick walk around before we actually get out to test this, we're still in lockdown so that could be a wee while yet um, yeah really love the space love the weight and I love that it pitches together which was the three main reasons I bought it to be honest and good price 240 quid which is cheaper than it should be I think so it makes it a relatively inexpensive bargain as far as I'm concerned on the downside um, that hood's annoying me I wish that would pop up and stay up I might be a way to get around that yet um, the poles still give me the fear being quite thin diameter but we'll see how that goes and I'd also like to have seen a double guy in on each pole just to give it that wee bit more strength but anyway we will see how it goes compared to the MSR Access 2 we've got a bit more room similar weight but we don't have the ultimate strength and being a tunnel you have to be kind of careful in terms of you need to make sure it's mostly tail into wind so I possibly might add another guiding point in the middle down here just to make sure it copes with side winds because let's face it you never get ideal conditions and it can change so thank you for watching everybody if there's any questions about it let me know um, it's not a new tent I've been around a while and there's a lot of good reviews uh, there's a chap online I think Ian Guest is it he's got some good videos on it as well and more detailed than mine but uh, we'll get out and try this so thank you for watching and I will see you again soon